Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling, and I'm your host. Now, Christy Freeland had uh, all kinds of excitement when she went into the House of Commons today. She was so excited to hear that the inflation was down to 2.7% instead of it being the 2.9% that it was a change of 02 And she was ready to show uh, the whole wide world that she's somehow some sort of mathematical genius, even though she has absolutely no idea how to, I'm sure she doesn't even know how to balance her own checkbook. I mean, when she first came back to Canada, she had to get her parents to co-sign. So I don't know that she's very good with her money. However, I would uh, point out that when she when she came head to head with um, Pierre Polyev, because of course Justin Trudeau wasn't in the house again, he, uh, he put her down so quickly, like he just put her right into her workplace, that she had to freak out. Like she lashed out. She started body shaming. She started to talk about people's looks. I mean, it was it's really kind of sad to see somebody kind of you know who thinks that they're like so elevated and so mature and so intellectual to just be reduced to body shaming and name calling. I mean, that's really what you want. You, you want to be the leader of this country, right? I get that they think they're bringing in Mark Carney, but it, secretly in the back of her mind, she thinks that she'll get more popular support from the, from the people, right? And that's the best she has, right? The guy counters what she has to say smoothly, plainly, just like Pierre Polyev always does. And she returns with how he looks. I think that that's kind of pathetic, personally. Now, before, uh, before I get into it, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with your friends. All right, let's get into this. So here you can see that why she got sad in the end, right? She came in because she heard 2.7 and she lost her mind, which is, again, only against um, April, right? So or April was 2.7 compared to March, excuse me, and then they released those numbers in May. And they'll release a new set of numbers in June which will be against May and things of that nature. Like it's a very short um, accumulation time. However, she didn't quite, she doesn't quite understand how economics works. And so 0.7 above like two is okay. 2% is okay for the bank. 2.7 is way higher than they want it to be almost a full point. And then to an economics person, a full point is a lot, right? When you consider that they only, they think in terms of only having a hundred points, right? So there's, because there's only a hundred points, then all of a sudden you, you have to realize the 0.7 of that a considerable amount that could, that could represent hundreds of millions of dollars. It could represent four bucks. It just depends on the equation. When it comes to the economy, it represents a significant amount of money. And Pierre Polyev understands that. And of course, Christian Freeland doesn't. So one, a couple of things that I want to, this is the paper that you see in front of you is taken from the, um, stats can. And there's a couple of things I'd like to point out to you that they put right in the report. I mean, it's anybody could get this, right? Deceleration of the CPI was moderated by gasoline prices, which rose at a faster pace in April than in March, excluding gasoline. All items CPI slowed to 2.5 year over year increase down from 2.8 in March. So what that says is that it's low. It, it was food came down to uh, 3%. 0.3% between March to April, year over year, meaning last March to this March, last April to this April, the difference is 0.3%. Now, if you were to go on a monthly basis, it rose 0.5% in April, mainly driven by the price of gas on the seasonally adjusted monthly basis. It rose 0.2% in April. And that means that she was losing her mind, right? Because she thinks now all of a sudden we're going to get loaded. But again, what I'd like to point out to you is that the stats can is indicating that these, all these market fluctuations were driven by gasoline. We're driven by what the carbon tax is imposing on everybody. And that seemed to have gone right over her head. Like, I swear they were, oh yeah, they brought out people from the back benches to fill the spaces that were empty. They were having a great time until Pierre Paulia pointed out that, you know, it's still considerably higher than it should be. Now, a couple other things on this paper that I'd like you to look at. I'd like you to look down here on the bottom where it says from April 2021 to April 2024, prices for food purchased from stores increased 21.4%. 21.4%. That's a huge increase, 21%. Also over here in the corner, I'd like to point out that in April of 2024, shelter was still up 6.4% year over year. 6.4% higher than it was last April. 
which is higher than it was. And, you know, it's the highest it's been in history, but she can't handle that. And when, when that got pointed out to her, she basically lost her composure. And it's just, I mean, like to resort to this kind of stuff is really, I think a bit, well, it speaks to the caliber and the character of the human being, honestly. All right, so now I'll shut up and let you listen to uh, the back and forth between the two of them, which was pretty one-sided, if I'm honest. Learned the terrible news that inflation is 35% above target again. And after eight years, this prime minister is not worth the cost of debt interest. And they can't do basic math over there. The 0.7 is actually a third higher than the 2% target. They're patting themselves on the back when they realize that Canadians can't afford to eat, heat, and house themselves. So why don't they, instead of quadrupling the carbon tax on the backs of Canadians, why don't they follow our common sense plan to suspend all gas and diesel tax until Labor Day? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader has quite proudly and publicly called for the Governor of the Bank of Canada to be fired. But maybe it's the Conservative leader who should lose his job because he just revealed his astonishing ignorance of the Bank of Canada's inflation target. The Bank of Canada has a target of between 1 and 3%. And for four months in a row, inflation in Canada has been within that target. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Not only does the incompetent finance minister not know the inflation <laughs> target, she doesn't know that you lock in low rates when you have the chance. Remember what the Prime Minister was saying, don't worry, we can double the national debt because interest rates are low, yep. Glenn. Problem is, I told him at the time that they should lock in those rates for 10 years or 30 years with long-term bonds. It turns out they didn't do that, and now $400 billion of that debt will roll over into these higher rates, forcing Canadians to spend more on interest than on health care. Why did he hire the worst mortgage broker in the world to be our finance minister? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. It's that the Conservative leader is in a grouchy mood today. Yeah. And I think we all know why. The only thing he knows how to do is talk down Canada. And what he just cannot bear is the reality that thanks to our fiscally responsible economic plan, inflation is at a three-year low. Oh, right. Inflation has been within the bank of four months in a row. That's good news for Canada and Canadians. That's right. That's right. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I think that you pay down debt by borrowing more, that you stop inflation by printing money, and that you fight the drug overdose crisis by legalizing hard drugs. So at least they're consistent in their irrationality, Mr. Speaker. But now they've been forced to backtrack right before the election on their legalization of hard drugs because Canadians are revolting against the policy. Today we have a motion that will be voted in the House to permanently ban hard drugs. Will this government vote for that motion or will they admit that they plan to, to, to legalize drugs again? after the next election. The, Deputy, the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is wearing more makeup than I am today. That's sad. Now, I think it's wonderful. I'm going to ask colleagues That's just unbecoming. I don't care what anybody says. Order. Order. I'm going to ask the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance to withdraw that comment. We don't comment on the appearances of members. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of uh, Finance. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm sorry, I withdraw that comment. 
can continue with her. She has 25 seconds left on the clock for her answer. Um, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is phony all the way through. He is phony when it comes to his concern about the economy. All he can do is talk our country down. And he is phony when he talks about his concern about the opioids crisis. He tries to score cheap partisan points. It's just not right, Mr. Now, it's sad that she would think that the man who's trying to get the economy up and running is somehow phony. I mean, phony, I'm not even sure how, you, how you're you allowed to say phony, but they'll probably talk about it in some sort of a point of privilege or something. And I don't think that she has any understanding of how the economy works, to be honest with you. I think that she just thought that she was going to have her way. And then she realized that she was the only one in the room who thought that. And now she just, you know, wanted to pout and throw a tantrum and start calling people makeup and all that kind of stuff. I don't think that she appreciates that people are paying attention and that people are serious and that she just thinks she's like, I mean, what is it? Who would say that some grade? Like, what is that grade four? Is that grade two? I mean, what is that? How immature is that comment? Especially from a person who is always, you know, touting the rainbow flag and saying to you, that, like, why would you pull that out? Why would you even pull that card out? Like, what, what were you hoping to accomplish? Honestly, I don't think that she does think, though. I think that she just lashed out. I think that there was nothing for her and she knew it and she just lost her composure, right? The problem with when you live in an echo chamber like the liberals do is that when they're confronted to, by somebody who tells them what they don't want to hear, who tells them that they have a different opinion than they do and they don't care that you don't like that, they lose control. They lose their, they lose control. They lose composure. They don't have a, a response to that because they're not able to think on their feet. They're simply just repeating talking points. They're parrots, right? And it's really kind of sad to see her break down like that, but it's kind of funny at the same time. I think that we should all be laughing at her collectively. But to say that Pierre Polyev is, is partisan over the opioid crisis. Now think of the, how twisted your brain got to be to come up with that kind of concept. That he thinks that it's, she thinks all of a sudden that it, it I mean, the logic there is kind of gross, if you want my opinion. She thinks that, he, you know, he only cares about it because only liberals are suffering under the opioid crisis or only conservatives are. I mean, who says to herself that it's a <clears throat> partisan, you heard her, a partisan argument that people are dying in the street because of liberal policies, that the economy is in the tank because of liberal policies. Unbelievable how out of touch this group of liberal people are. Like, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be in a room with these guys having a conversation where they're in their little echo chamber. That would be, I mean, I would do that. I would suffer through that just so that I could laugh at them. And it would be funny, you know, but it's not funny because these people get to make decisions that impact the remainder of, our, of us, right? They, they get to make choices and impacts that cause the rest of us to suffer because of those choices. And that ain't funny at all. Not for anybody, not for me, not for you, not for even other liberals to be completely candid with you. If you're a hardcore, you know, I have a liberal tattoo on my buttocks. These decisions are still impacting you negatively. Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I would appreciate it if you would share this channel with your friends. Comment, like, give it the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Remember, I have memberships if you want to support the channel further. I'll talk to you next time.